What is going on, YouTube people? Neo Cards and Comics here today to talk about some tips and tricks to attending large card shows, comic cons, whatever. I've done New York City Comic Con, I've done Heroes Con, I've done multiple nationals, I've done Gen Con, uh, plenty of local and regional shows. So these are just some of the things that I like to keep in mind when heading into these larger shows. We have the National coming up in six, seven weeks. Heroes Con is later this week. New York City Comic Con and San Diego Comic Con will be coming up later this year. So I figured I would go over some of the things that I have learned, experienced doing and attending multiples of these events. If you have something that I did not mention or something that works really well for you, fire it down in the comments down below because it will only serve to help everybody else. So I have five of these. There's technically like a bonus sixth one, but it's kind of fairly obvious. So top five sounds better than top six when it comes to a YouTube thumbnail. So we're going to go with five, but the, this, this one off the top does not count towards the five. It, it's the obvious one. Comfortable shoes, food, water, snacks, whatever. Those are, to me, just baseline important. Assume you are going to be in the show or the con or whatever for the better part of the day. A lot of these places either don't have great options for lunch or have zero options for lunch, or it is extremely expensive or very long lines. I typically like to carry a couple granola bars, uh, a stick of beef jerky, something like that, and then multiple bottles of water. I usually take in at least two bottles of water minimum, uh, just so I can keep hydrated, get a quick snack and keep it moving, and then eat like a regular meal for dinner. That way I either don't have to leave the show floor and I can avoid the cafeteria style food that may be available on site. So that's bonus tip, I guess. I feel like that's something that everyone always kind of says. These are in no particular order. The first tip on my list, and there, like I said, there's no relevance between these. And I know that this kind of goes against what I just said in regards to snacks, water, etc. But that is travel light. You only want to bring what you need. I have two different bags uh, that I use when I go to shows. One is a smaller over the shoulder style bag. It's actually designed to carry an iPad is, is what its native purpose is, but it's got a lot of good little pouches and stuff in it. That is what I started carrying last year at the national. I used to carry a backpack, but throughout the day it just became too much to carry after multiple days. You wouldn't think that it would get that bad. Hashtag old man. But I stopped carrying a backpack at the national. I also, for the national specifically on the sports card side of things, I stopped carrying my card case. It is, in my opinion, not the best use of time to try to do trades on the showroom floor. Don't hand your case to a dealer and have them flip through it. It just wastes a ton of time. If you want to bring trade stuff, pull out your couple super liquid things or things that you are really looking to move. Have a price in mind for them and throw them in your bag. That's what I do. I carry maybe six to eight cards in that bag. They fit I have a little compartment for them that they slide into. And then anything that I buy, I can also slide into there. And I have a little spot for my cash that's in a hidden inside pocket. That's key as well. Make sure wherever you're storing your money, whether it's on you or in a bag, that you have that secured. Uh, I have a pants that have uh, zip up pockets on them. Sometimes I'll keep it in there. Sometimes I'll keep it in the bag. And then like I said, anything that I purchase will go in that bag. And then I have room for two bottles of water and a couple snacks. For a Comic-Con, for Heroes Con and for New York City Comic-Con, I went with the backpack. The backpack was basically empty to start. Uh, I had the bottles of water and snacks, but the reason you need the backpack, at least I need the backpack for the Comic-Con is because if you buy comics or other memorabilia, whatever, you need space to put that somewhere. So I have a backpack that has a slot for uh, a laptop specifically uh, in the back and it holds CGC slabs very well. Now you can't hold a ton of them in there, but you can in the main compartment. So for Comic-Con, I carry in basically an empty backpack to have stuff to store in there. If you're bringing items in to sign, 
keep that in mind for storage and how are you going to protect them carrying them around after they're signed, which will lead me to one of my points upcoming here shortly. The other thing that I carry, which is a non-negotiable, is I have an anchor battery backup supply. Uh, it is a large one. It is not light, but I can charge my phone multiple times. It could charge a laptop. It could charge an iPad. That has saved my butt on numerous occasions, especially at New York City Comic Con, because we were we were not staying on site. So we were away from the hotel for the entire day from early morning until late evening. And between the con and then traveling around the city and the subways and dinner and everything else, my phone battery was shot. I had to charge it multiple times. Battery backup is absolutely clutch for these larger shows, especially if you know you're going to be gone for all day. At the National, you get the show floor first thing in the morning. You might not be back to your room, depending on where you're staying, until 2, 3 o'clock in the morning if you're hitting trade nights right after and maybe grabbing dinner. So battery backup, highly, highly recommended. It's probably the number one thing uh, of items that I bring with me. That's the most important one. I make sure that I charge it every night. Uh, even if I haven't used it that much, some days you get through the day just fine, but get yourself a nice little anchor battery backup. If I think about it, I'll link to the one that I use uh, in, or something similar to it in the description of this video down below. Next. This is probably the most important one. These are not in any particular order, but I view this as one of the most important ones, especially for the super large shows like the National. New York City Comic Con, I was not able to do this just because of the logistics of it. But that is, if capable, if able, stay on site or as close as you possibly can. The National in Chicago, I stay across the street. I can be back in my room in 10 minutes. Atlantic City National, that was not the case. New York City Comic Con National, that was not the case. It changes your plan and how you're going to approach the show. I will pay a premium to stay on site. I cannot tell you how valuable it is to be able to sneak off the show floor and go back to your room, even if it's just for like an hour. One, it's nice if you buy stuff to drop it off. If you're at a card show and you buy wax, and you want to take it back to the room, you can. If you're at a Comic-Con and you buy a bunch of CGC slabs or a bunch of comic books, or maybe you went to an artist signing, or maybe you got a sports memorabilia signed or something, being able to take that stuff back to the room and stash it so you don't have to carry it all day is huge. And do not underrate. This really saved me at the Chicago National a couple of years ago. I look forward to being able to do this again this year. Just getting off the show floor and just sitting in a quiet room for like an hour, 45 minutes, hour and a half, just relaxing, laying down in the bed, sitting in the in the desk chair, whatever, totally changed the rest of my day. I would use that opportunity as a time to go back to the room, sit. Maybe there was a card or two that I saw that needed a little bit more research or a comic book that needed a little bit more digging. Maybe I wanted to double check the pop counts. Maybe I wasn't able to do it on my phone or it just needed a little bit of a deeper dive. I would take photos of the item in question. And then when I would go back to my room to chill for a little bit, I would then go ahead and dig into that. And then I would have a better idea of, oh, okay, here's the pricing history on it, or here's what I want to offer on it. Or maybe I don't want this after all. But that hour or so in the room, having easy access to get back to the room, one, to drop items off, and two, just to recharge yourself a little bit, comes in so clutch. Once again, I'm 43 years old. Hashtag old man. Body, not as young as it used to be. Hours and hours and hours on those hard concrete floors. Sitting down for an hour makes you feel like a million bucks. Especially if you can go back to your room and lay down. Uh, maybe even take a quick shower. Whatever. You feel like a hundred bucks when you walk out of there. You feel, feel recharged. And most of these shows tend to be very, very long days. Next up, have a plan. For smaller shows, local shows, even some regional shows, I don't walk in with a plan as much. I might have one or two things that I want to accomplish, but generally speaking, I'm just kind of walking around, seeing what catches my eye. I kind of know what I'm looking for in most cases. For larger shows, I walk in with a plan. For the national, I have a list of cards that I'm specifically looking for or an objective in mind. I would like to obtain X, Y, or Z card. 
Uh, last year, for example, was I wanted to move out of a card, the Baker Mayfield RPA. In addition to that, there were certain things that I was looking for. Luca blue color match, Tatum green color match, mission accomplished on both. When I went to Heroes Con last year, my goal specifically was an X-Men number four. It was a bigger purchase. I knew I was going to be buying a slightly lower grade. I wanted to buy that book in person so I can evaluate the condition and the eye appeal better than buying it online. New York City Comic Con. That was a little bit of a different story. That one I was going in specifically for, not specifically, but that was less of a, I want to buy comic books, more of a, I want to take in the experience. What booths had cool stuff going on? Was there cool exclusives? Was there good giveaways? Was there a certain t-shirt that I wanted to buy that was a, a con exclusive? Uh, I, I wanted to see certain people and talk to them. I knew that Reggie Collects was there. I wanted to stop by his booth and chat with him for a minute and meet Doug Bratton, uh, his writer that I, I haven't that I've interacted with a bunch online but never met in person. I wanted to go by the CGC booth and, and, and see Fausto. Whatever it is that you're trying to do and everyone's goals are going to be different. And each individual show that I've attended of the larger shows, those goals were different. One was very transactional based. One was very specific item based. And one was very people slash experience based. New York City Comic Con, I wanted to take in the experience. Heroes Con, I mean, all of them you want to take in the experience, but specifically NYCC, I wanted to absorb that environment, experience it, see the cool stuff that's only going to be there. Heroes Con, I wanted to do that, but I had a specific target in mind. I wanted to find an X-Men 4 that presented well in a low grade for a solid price. Mission accomplished. The National, I had specific cards I wanted to move off of and specific cards I was looking to acquire, in addition to the social aspects of it. The National, I'm not going hunting for the freebies and the promos and whatnot. New York City Comic Con, I wasn't, but there was certain things that caught my eye that I was like, oh, I would actually like to pick that up, or I want to make sure that I experience this. Just know what your goal is for the show that you're attending. Maybe it's a little bit of all of them. If you're going for multiple days, maybe segment that out. Hey, today I want to hunt for the card. Great, I found it, or the book, whatever. Oh, today I want to make sure that I swing by and check out the Stranger Things booth at the National last year. It was really cool. Or I want to stop by the Marvel Snap booth at New York City Comic Con. Or I want to go to the Marvel booth and get some of the con-exclusive whatevers. Or maybe at Heroes Con, you want to make sure that you get the Chris Claremont signing. So you make sure that you go there. Every day is going to have micro goals, but just generally speaking, have a plan of attack when you're going in. If you're only going to be there for one day versus multiple days, have an idea what you want to get done on each day. You're never going to be able to do everything. You're going to miss some stuff. But if you go in with some sort of plan, it will make your life a lot easier. Next, cash is king. If you were going to buy, if you were going to transact, cards, comics, memorabilia, whatever, bring as much cash as you possibly can. Don't rely on people's ability to take PayPal. Don't rely on people's willingness to take electronic payment, whether it's PayPal, credit cards, whatever. You are going to have the most success getting deals done and getting the best price if you put cash, physical, card, cold, hard cash on the table one and this will lead into the next thing the internet might be spotty you might not be able to even access your paypal the dealers a lot of times don't want to take it you could get your account flagged or shut down because all of a sudden you're sending a bunch of friends and family payments in one single day i've heard of that happening to people bring cash set a budget don't go crazy maybe have someone reserve in paypal but cash is ultimately king. And then know how you're going to carry that, where you're going to keep it, and check it constantly. Be aware of your surroundings and your environment. If you're at a trade night and you're showing someone your cards, it's easy to get distracted. Keep an eye on them. Don't turn your back on stuff. Don't leave your backpack laying around. Don't leave your shoulder bag laying around. Don't leave your card case laying around. Always be very aware of your environment. And if someone is flipping through your cards, your comics, whatever, try to keep eyes on them as best as possible. You know, you might be looking through their stuff as well, but just make sure that you're casually looking up and glancing and whatnot. If someone takes a stack of cards out of your case, perfectly fine, but just make sure that you're aware of that and you're keeping an eye on that. Finally, I list staying on site as one of the most important ones. I think this one's also extremely important. 
assume no internet access. I've been to plenty of these shows. Internet works great, no problems. Atlantic City last year for the national, internet access was extremely spotty. It caused chaos. Assume no internet access. What does that mean? What we just talked about. Assume you don't have access to your PayPal and you need to have cash. Know your prices. If there is something you are specifically hunting for, going back to what we talked about before, if you have target items in mind, know what they are and know, generally speaking, what they go for in the grades that you are looking for. I put that in my phone. I'm getting ready to prep for Heroes Con this week. There's a list of books that I'm walking in with my eyes on. I am putting a list together around the, around the grade ranges that I am looking for and researching what the last 90 days sold values look like for fair market value on those books. So I generally have a decent idea. Normally, sure, I could pull up GPA, eBay sold listings, market movers, whatever, but assume you are not gonna have internet access. On the flip side of that, if you were taking items to sell or trade, a uh, trade night at a card show or on, a, on the show floor, maybe you're bringing books to potentially sell to a dealer, know your prices. And in fact, I go one step for, forward. The night before the national, I price all my stuff that I'm taking to trade in my box, just like if I was setting up at the show. I get little white stickers. I go through and comp everything the night before, sticker everything up. One, I can tell you right now, it saves you a ton of time. It made deals so much easier. Because I could say, I, I, comped it, I comped it Wednesday. That was the comp on Wednesday. You could feel free to double check it but that's at least the comp. And then we could figure out if it's a cash deal, trade deal, whatever it is, but it just saves so much time. And like I said, in Atlantic city last year, internet was spotty. Chicago was good, but it might not be this year. Maybe something happens. Maybe the internet goes down for a few hours. Maybe there's so many people on it. It's running super slow, whatever the case might be. If you know your prices of your own items and also what you're looking for, if there is an environment like that where internet service is spotty. You now have an edge potentially over somebody else because you know your numbers without having to rely on the app. Everyone has a notes field, put it in the notes on your phone, write it down on a computer, save the word document, send it to yourself, download it as a PDF or whatever to have access to. There's a million ways that you could do it without having to have access to the internet, but prepare like you are not going to have access. And then if you don't, you're ready to go. If you do, perfect. Worst case scenario, you have access to the internet, but because you know what you're looking for and know the prices of your own stuff, it makes you more efficient and easier to deal with and saves you time. And time is the ultimate factor at these big shows. There is never enough of it to do everything and see everything. That's all I got for you boys and girls. Curious for your tips and tricks for attending large shows? card shows, Comic-Cons, whatever. Throw them in the comments down below. We will catch you boys and girls on the next one. And I hope to see you at Heroes Con this week and the National in about six weeks. Peace.